Today we're going to see five knitting patterns that I would love to knit again and again and again. Hello and welcome back. Thanks for being here. My name is Rebecca and this is Moving Stitches, my knitting channel where I mostly talk about knitting. Sometimes it's podcasts, sometimes it's pattern roundups like the one that I'm bringing you today and sometimes it's vlogs. So for today's episode I'm going down memory lane to bring you five knitting patterns that have got me out of a knitting rut but also five knitting patterns that I could love to knit again for the first time. Some of the patterns that I'm sharing with you I've actually knitted already more than once but I just want to share with you why they've been so key in either bringing my mojo back or building my confidence or just why I love them so much that if you've not made any of this you should totally totally go and knit them. So we're gonna go with pattern number one. For pattern number one I've got the lento sweater. I have this um, theory that in life you either are a vernacular person or a lento person. Of course you can be both of them but there's and I shared this with someone earlier on Instagram, there's the majority of people that like have knitted the vernaculars probably four or five six times and then there's a bunch of us that just love the lento sweater and have knitted it not once or twice but actually I've knitted a lento sweater four times. <laughs> the other two have been gifted. Lento is a pattern by Jonah Hietela who is I think one of the editors of Lena magazine and the way in which I found this pattern was thanks to Amy Palco and Rebecca Klo who praised it like a couple of years ago on their YouTube podcast and organized a knit alone. Lento is a pattern that has nine sizes and is knitted in 15 stitches for 21 rows to give you 10 centimeters. This is knitted in six millimeter needles and the original pattern uses two yarns and Ravelry says that the yarn weight of the actual pattern is fingering. However, many of us, as you can probably tell, have used a fluff and fingering so it's probably more tailored towards a sport one. I've knitted four of them <laughs> and my first one which is probably the one that doesn't fit that amazingly but I'm still really fond of it. This one is the one that was my entry for the knit alone and I've knitted this in holst coast not super soft the one that has lamb wool 50% lamb wool and 50% cotton and it was a pink shade, I'll pop it over here so that you can see it. So it definitely had nothing to do with the dross, drops alpaca in red that I mix it with, but I think together it gave it like a really, really nice shade. I knitted this as per pattern and the only modification that I made was that I didn't do the crochet cast on because I deeply hate it, don't find it really easy. And instead I just did one by one rib, long tail cast on, fold it. And of you go and I knitted it long sleeves. Well the original pattern as you probably know by now is like a fair sleeve and then I decrease super rapidly. So yeah it's a little bit crop. It's a really airy gauge which for Scotland might not have been <laughs> the best at the time but because of the drops of Paca it gives it like a really matte finish and still it's very 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 warm. The reason why I love this pattern before I jump and show you the second one is because to me this was a product knit. It was the simplest raglan sweater to do while the second one that I'll show you in a minute is more of a project knit and it's actually the one that I've worn the most. The Lento makes the perfect blank canvas. Such an easy sweater The once you need your first one you can really start to get confident with either mixing colors that maybe you want to test maybe you've got some leftover yarn that was my case and you want to see how it goes or maybe you want to add color work texture you want to experiment with different types of sleeves or neck and that is the reason why i love the lento so much is because if i need something easy i can do a lento because it's just a mindless need but also if i need something to experiment with color this will always be the blank canvas that I go back to. And the second entry for that knit alone was this one. And this, I call it my lollipop lento. This is knitted with sock yarn, is West Yorkshire spinners for ply signature, which 
to this day, I think is one of the best, if not the best, sock yarn I've tried so far. It is in the color white, but I had one skein of Rowan Kid Silk Haze in this hot pink, and another one in this orange. And then I was stuck not knowing how to use them. So what I did was go to my local yarn shop and get this super cool color from Phil Colanatilia, which is called Playa. And I decided to make big stripes. I had to improvise because <laughs> I ran out of the last one, the blue color on the sleeves. But this is what I mean with the blank camber. Suddenly you're in a position where you're like, I don't have any more yarn, what do I do? And sometimes inspiration strikes. So I decided to do just a couple of rows of the orange, a couple of rows of the pink. And I thought that is a cute detail. The third one and the fourth one, I also knitted with different yarns. So basically I took the stitch gauge and then decided that I was going to do whatever I wanted. This one is knitted with five millimeter needles instead of six. The first one was knitted with six. There's the most recent one that I made was for my sister-in-law and it's a hot pink according to the Barbie Lento. And the other one is one that I gifted to a friend before I moved back from Scotland and it's knitted with two strands of silk mohair and one strand of drops flora. And it's just a project that I know I'm going to make one more this autumn, but more of that in another video. From a pattern that I have actually knitted four times to a pattern that I've only knitted once, but it was the first time that I've knitted color work. Even if it was a slip stitches, that's color work. And I absolutely loved it. And it's one of my most worn winter knits. This is the Moon Whistle Shawl by Andrea Maury. It's big and it has these beautiful colors. So, I knew Andrea Maui was really popular and I wanted to know why. And I had never needed a shawl and it was dead cold in Scotland. I'm not, I'm, I'm not into shawls that are too complicated or have too much going on or that I have too many textures. So I'm not a stiff and worst shawl. Don't hate me. It's just not my vibe. I appreciate it for you guys. I'm more into like Andrea Maui ones. And this, this was so fun. I wanted to try color work and I wanted to need something that was more resembling of a scarf than an actual show. I think it was Jonathan from Jonathan Days. He's got one and I was watching his too. Yeah, I think I was watching his podcast and I remember thinking, God, that is really, really cool. And if he has a stripes, I'm sold. So after swapping some yarn with a friend, I decided to just go for it. And here we are. The Moon Whistle Shawl is a one size shawl that is knitted mostly in garter stitch and it mixes some slip stitches to create that type of like color work effect over here. The age of this pattern is 13 stitches for 24 rows and 10 centimeters in garter stitch, as I said, and it uses around 858 meters of Aran weight yarn. Now for me, this was purely a process knit. I just knitted it because I wanted to knit a shawl, I wanted to knit something big and I wanted to knit something fun. And I think what Andrea Maui does really, really well after knitting socks, sweater and a shawl from her is that she knows perfectly fine the part in which a knitter gets bored of doing a certain stitch and she gets you to change something. You start in one tip and you finish on the other one and if you see it she knows that by this time you will get bored of like slipping stitches so then she moves into color work and she gets you to do some stripe. And then when you're just about like done with the stripes because it's getting really long she gets you to change again. She is a queen of keeping projects fun and modern that don't feel outdated because this is a pattern from like three, four years ago. And to me, this still feels really modern. At this time, I just didn't swatch and just went for it. So the blue is sloppy. The green one is sock, like hand dyed sock yarn. And the beige one is drops for Laura that I had left over and, I, and again, I just held it double. And I flipping adore it. This to me is purely a project for the process. Although I want to need another one of these and I've got enough Aran yarn to make it. And I'm actually thinking about using some of the ones that you see here. I may use some DK for the next one so that I can make it smaller because it's so hot. I'm just going to show you how humongous this is.
it is a show that I don't see a lot of people talking about and I can't tell you how fun and how proud I was at the end of knitting this so definitely something I wish I was to rediscover today keeping on the side of accessories the third pattern I don't have any of them it's a pattern that I tend to gift and it's Jason's cashmere hat so I'll try to put some pictures in here because I've knitted it three times like one of my best friends and my boyfriend last year and the other one I've knitted it for a friend in Scotland right before I left so Jason's cashmere hat is a free project on Ravelry you just have to go to Ravelry from there to a website it will redirect you you can read the structures in this the easiest more simplest way do get stuck with cables especially if like me you've been avoiding them as hell because you feel intimidated in my case i feel intimidated with cables because i'm left handed and i think some of the patterns that i like are very complicated i have to reverse engineer them and i get a little bit overwhelmed with having to put so much work when i just want to knit them this is also a project that is knitted in iron weight and it uses barely any yarn. It uses 183 meters. And I can tell you, fun fact, that it's a little bit less depending on your gauge. So I've knitted it in gold wool that I got from Beautiful Knitters for my partner. I've also knitted it, the first two, in Cascades 220, which is a fabulous yarn that I wish I was able to get in Spain, but it's very difficult. I've not found it so far. It's a hat that you can literally knit in two nights watching just a couple of episodes. The gauge for this pattern is a little bit funny. In Ravelry it says it's six stitches for seven rows in two and a half centimeters on five millimeter needles. I want to know in this moment in time if you're watching this and you've done this hat, raise your hand if you've not swatched for it. I've not swatched a single time. I just made sure that I got some iron yarn and I just went for it. And I think the only thing I measured was the like the width of the ribbon just to make sure that it, it fitted the person that I was gifting it to. And it is so fun to knit. It's again a process knit, but it turns out that in the end it ends up being a product knit. It's something that will build your confidence with cables if you've not done any, but also something that if you just want something quick and easy to get out of a knitting rod and feel that instant gratification, you know, confidence coming back to you just get this the next pattern that i've got for you is a little bit more like um weather appropriate for me right now my tall settee i wanted to say that for me it's not just the tall settee but also the tall satin which i wore yesterday to the beach if there's one and i could only pick one this this could be it this one i knitted in apparently it's like vk yarn it's a style craft but it's more of a sport yarn so i had to do some modifications with the math to get the gauge and it's size five but purely because it's not dk1 so the torsati is a pattern by rebecca Klo, also known as the crabia here on youtube it's just simple and functional and fun to knit so this is that similar to the lentil that kind of like mindless knit that sometimes you need in your life the torsati is knitted in five millimeter needles and the gauge is 17 stitches for 27 rows on stocking it you also have the option to now use finger and weight and also it gives you options to make longer sleeves which i think is really cool this is both a process and product knit and similar to lento i would say that the lento is in winter to me what the toaster is in summer there's a bazillion modifications of the toaster and actually just in the pattern which I think is really cool. You have another page in case you want to do some of the modifications that people have made. I've made this one, I think it's roughly 10 days or yeah, 10 or 11 days. I've worn it a lot. I'll probably use something else that was like a cotton and bamboo yarn because this is majority bamboo and it's peeled a little bit. I don't know if you can see it there, but it has some peeling. Reasons to knit this, simple. It's a great intro to summer teas and something that you know you will use. Great into to raglan as well if you don't want to need a lento you want something like a smaller gauge and overall something that you can use as your blank canvas and just have freedom and fun with it which i think was the purpose originally when she created this so yeah 10 out of 10 i have yarn for another one i will do another one again so the other pattern that i would love to knit again and again i will because i know that i want to do a couple of gifts and was hell lot of fun is the Maxine hot bottle cover. If you've been here long enough, you probably are like, okay, yeah, Rebecca, I heard you many times, talk about these patterns, move on. I want. So I'm really sorry, but I want. This is a pattern by Laura Penrose. 
who by the way is designing currently the sweater with this motif which is something really cool i tested this pattern for her like around last christmas right before christmas in december it just brings a smile to my face because the test was full of like really really nice people a friend of mine was testing for her too and it was such a nice way to use yarns and color combinations that I probably could have not knitted this is the first one that i knitted and it's a little bit of gauge i've just knitted the neck a little bit longer than pattern suggested if it's a two liter bottle and it's just cute and fun and colorful and what a contrast what a contrast i've used in here long skeins then I just didn't know what to do with and give the skein so it has a little bit of everything it has finished wool in it from Tuku wool it has Rauma in it El Roble de la Santa which is a Spanish brand and I loved it it is knitted in decay the gauge is 24 stitches for 25 rows and 4 millimeter needles and the reasons to love it is purely because it's a great introduction to color work it's fun it's quick and it will just make you feel I don't know empowered like you can do color work that is the only, the only way that I can describe it. I just feel like I could do really pretty things in a really simple way. And I would encourage you if you've never knitted color work and are just like really afraid of knitting it because maybe you don't want to invest, you know, in a sort of quantity, knowing that you don't know how you're going to find the gauge, how you're going to keep your attention. Just need something small like this. It, it's just great. And it makes a great gift if you don't use it for yourself. This is the second one which I gifted for my partner over Christmas so we could have matchy ones because I don't share mine and he absolutely loves it and again great use of scrap or leftover yarn this to me is definitely a process knit and I would love to test knit the sweater when she brings it up but I know I'm just not gonna have the physical time in my hands to actually go for it but if you can please apply to that test if she puts um if Laura puts an open call because this it will bring a lot of joy into your life and i just want everyone to discover it so that's all for me for today i think these are five knitted patterns that can bring you a lot of joy and get you out of a knitting rut but i would love to know what are your favorite patterns the ones that you would love to knit again and again and again so please just drop them in the comments below because i always like to know what people are knitting i will see you again in two weeks with a regular knitting podcast episode and until then, I hope you have a good week, a lot of nitty time, take care of yourself and be well. Bye.